Okay. Okay, you come to me? Yeah. You gonna come to me? Hi, you watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Okay. There you go. Ready? Washington Dante, Boxing Nation. There you go. It's good, but it's it's a little too dark for me. Let me see. Let's try this from this angle. Couldn't see your face when you come here. Okay, there. Better, better. Okay. All right. Ready? Go ahead. Hi, you Washington Dante, Boxing Nation. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? Boy, oh boy, it is amazing how Isaac Cruz surviving Javante Tank Davis, and when I say surviving, I mean going 12 rounds and not being another knockout victim, how that has completely changed his career. Isaac Cruz is now being treated like he's an undefeated prospect, but I think that's well-deserved because Isaac Cruz, there's no doubt about it, is one of the best lightweights, and he will beat a lot of the top lightweights. I mean, just for example, when you think about the fact that Lomachenko, he lost to Orlando Salido, and we know that when it comes to Isaac Cruz, he is much, much, much better than Salido. That alone tells you how difficult a fight like that would be for Lomachenko. Styles definitely make fights, and Lomachenko, as proven in the Salido fight, doesn't do well against short, compact, aggressive fighters, especially at 135. So with that being said, the undefeated prospect or top contender now, Michelle Rivera, the Muhammad Ali lookalike, he actually said something in a recent interview that was a little surprising. Now, and this all stems from him going live and him calling out Javante Tang Davis because I believe Rivera is now like the number one contender for a Javante Tang Davis fight. So he's been calling out Javante Tang Davis, but that's not the surprising part. The surprising part was when he revealed that Isaac Cruz was offered the Rivera fight three to four times and he turned it down. Y no me la dan, entonces imagínense que hay empujas, pues yo no soy una persona que le gusta hablar demasiado, pero hay que hacer que el, que el público sepa qué está pasando dentro, ¿me entiendes? Entonces eh, ya se le ofertó también al Pico Club para pelear y también rechazó la oferta más de tres meses o cuatro. Ahí también de nuevo no digo él, digo su equipo, eh, porque el peleador muchas veces no controla si toma una decisión o no, tiene que ser con el equipo, pero no ha querido, entonces imagínense, esperando a ver qué, qué pasa para mí. Me... Okay, so once again, in that clip, Rivera, he revealed that Isaac Cruz's team, they turned down the fight three or four times, and then he tried to be respectful to Cruz by saying, but it wasn't his fault, you know, I'm sure it was the team that turned it down, not him. But we know that's not the case, because we know that Isaac Cruz's team, they work for Cruz. Cruz doesn't work for his team. Not to mention, Jose El Ryle is also calling out Isaac Cruz. He's been aggressively calling him out, and Cruz just recently came out and made it very clear he has no interest in an El Rayo fight, proving it's Isaac Cruz who's making the decisions, not his team. But when it comes to Michelle Rivera, he's been avoided for quite some time because if you guys recall, he was also calling out Roly Romero. But once again, he wasn't just calling him out just to call him out. He was mainly calling out Romero because he is the WBA number one contender. Now listen, it's completely understandable that Roly Romero would obviously want to fight Javante Tank Davis, before he fights a Michelle Rivera. Because win, lose, or draw, the paydays don't compare when it comes to Roley fighting against Davis. But the thing is, now that Roley Romero has lost to Javante Tang Davis, those are the type of fights that make sense now. Isaac Cruz is in the same situation. He already lost to Javante Tang Davis, and now he's trying to wait around to possibly get another Javante Tang Davis fight. But the only way uh, Isaac Cruz rematch makes sense is if Isaac Cruz gets a big win over a Michelle Rivera or a, a Jose Venezuela. If Cruz is not getting a win like that, then a rematch against Javante Tank Davis, it makes no sense. But now Michelle Rivera is in a very powerful position because he is Javante Tank Davis's mandatory. And Rivera is no joke. He has great skills. He's definitely one of the top lightweights in the division. 
So he's a serious threat to anyone at 135. And it puts Javante Tank Davis in a really compromising situation because Rivera is pushing hard to force the WBA to order that fight, which means that's going to ultimately put a lot of pressure on Tank Davis to either take the Devin Haney fight to fight for Undisputed or defend your belt against Rivera. And that's regardless if Tank gets the Ryan Garcia fight or not. Because once again, once the WBA orders Javante to fight against Michelle Rivera, he's going to have to either defend his belt against Rivera or take on the Devin Haney fight. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a possibility that Javante, he could still end up taking one more fight before this fight is ordered. But eventually, he is going to be ordered to fight against Rivera. And that's when he's only going to have the option to either fight him, vacate the belt, or fight Devin Haney. Let's see what Javante decides to do. Because Rivera, he already made it very clear. He's going to wait around for them to order that fight. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. My name is Chris, and I'm all the way here from Anchorage, Alaska at Scout Carolinas, and I'm here for my second treatment of SMP. Well, I was sitting at home one day and uh, going over my Facebook page, and they have different, you know, like advertisements popping up, and I saw one for SMP, and I saw some pictures of some guys, you know, a before and after, and I was looking at that, and, it, you know, it caught my attention, so I Googled it. SMP, nothing showed up in my area. So, uh, you know, I did a little more research and all of a sudden, Scout Carolinas popped up in the web browser. So I started uh, watching his videos and uh, seeing all the reaction from all the other people. We talked on the phone, we made appointments and everything. I sent him pictures and uh, uh, he looked at them and I was like, can you fix this? And, uh, you know, he pretty much said, no problem. My first session, uh, he made me feel extremely comfortable. Uh, it was almost like I was talking to family. He started and uh, during the whole, whole treatment, we talked and, you know, about our families and our life and, you know, and things that he does and things that I do. And before I know it, the first session was over. When you see someone doing something that they love, uh, as much as I see Enoch Glover love what he does, uh, it shows in his work. I wouldn't point anyone in any other direction but here to North Carolina, Scout Carolinas, to get this done. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Key Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODeKey.com, like them on Facebook, and follow them on Instagram. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs or defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com.